discuss. I'm area man Aaron Vantile, joined today by Chronicle Editor-in-Chief Eric Schwartz, Chronicle VP Franklin Taylor, and Chronicle Reporter Isabel Vanderstoop. We're joined in spirit by sponsors Summit Funding and The Roof Doctor. How is everybody? Full roster today. Full? We got a full house yeah. here. Oof, it's the first time in a while. Yeah, it's nice to see. Glad you guys could all make it. Mm-hmm. How was Nashville, Aaron? I had a lovely time. I don't really care. I just wanted to illustrate you haven't been working. <laughs> I, <laughs> yes. Is he ever? I was gone for a lengthy, almost two days. He was drinking with a former WF West quarterback. He texted me. Oh, wow. I, I was. I, I didn't get time. that text message. Interesting. I don't think you know him. <laughs> well, you know, Aaron and I, we're buds. Who was, yeah. who, who was the former quarterback? Uh, Tanner Geller. Oh, what a shock. I, I have I, no I, history with the Gellers. I, I know. <laughs> yeah, every three or four years, Tanner Did and I Did he just happen to be there? And, yeah, I tweeted something about being there, and he called me like five minutes later. And he's That's like, pretty wild. What are you doing in Nashville? And I was like, what are you doing in Nashville? I think that Aaron just thinks I'm interested in anything that even slightly relates to Shayla's. Oh, I think the same thing, though. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, well, I mean, I mean, that's how everybody is alive. around me who isn't from Shehalis, they're like, oh, of course you feel that way. You're from Shehalis. Like, it's a, always a thing. And I don't even, I don't know. I don't know. I think at the newspaper, we're used to years and upon years of having to convince reporters from out of town that things are important. So you're just like kind of preaching at them. And with you, it's like, it's just, hey, this is new information. Let's tell a Shehalis. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they got a mint factory. Have you heard about this? Uh, anyway, news items. First up, evacuation notices have been lifted for Packwood and all areas southwest of Butter Creek, including High Valley. A little more than a week after the Goat Rucks fire grew rapidly and raised fears the fire would reach the East Lewis County communities. Is everyone relieved? Not necessarily. I mean, this fire is not going to end until a season-ending rain. Like, it's not going to... While we are in a much better place than we were, like... Even the last time we talked about it, let alone the weekend before the last time we talked about it, um, this is still something very much that Packwood and outlying neighborhood people have to keep an eye on and will have to be paying attention to over the next couple of weeks, especially this week as the weather is better. But hopefully we will get enough rain soon that will end it. I mean, there was some online chatter we were discussing this afternoon that potentially maybe it's seen more activity and it's warmer out today than it has been. If you look out, I just looked out and the flag's waving, so we've got some decent wind. I don't know what the situation is in Packwood, but... Wow, true weather yeah, man. I am. Wait, <laughs> let me check. He checked his weather rock. It's blowing the other way now. Mm-hmm. Still, still blowing, though. The signs outside a warehouse are blowing one way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did you see the uh, therapy dogs visited the firefighters on the front lines? I did. I, those were some very good photos. Heroes. Yeah. Are they heroes of the week? Uh, Stay tuned. I'm not going to not show my hand on that just yet. All right. Uh, next item. Bart, the very old donkey, a companion to Centralia family. Bart has lived with Linda Lennox and her husband, Richard, on Schubert Road for about 27 years. Bart was a gift from Sean and Andy Hamilton, who also lived on Schubert Road after they had him for two years. The Hamiltons got Bart at a livestock auction, and their guess is at the time he was about seven years old. By this rough estimate, Bart the very old donkey is 110 36. years old. <laughs> very possibly <laughs> older. The average donkey lives to 27 years, though they have been known to live 40 years or more. Um, this story was a lot of fun. Well done, Isabel. Thank I'm you. also interested in how you pitched it. Was it just, hey, I heard about this donkey? It's old. So <laughs> I'll tell the background story. Herb Yantis passed away recently and we ran his obit um, and he had a mule, Ted, who lived to be 52. And I was like, wow, that's so interesting. And I looked up uh, mules. Oh, they live a really long time. And I've been trying to put more stuff online because I don't have like a lot of a presence. So I tweet, I just learned mules can live to be 50. And then I got a reply from a friend, Zoe Saylor, who is the granddaughter of Linda Lennox. And she was like, oh my gosh, my grandparents' donkey is 40. And so then I heard from Schwartz that he had done a story on Ted the Mule. And I was like, I can do a story on the donkey. And then it was great because I knew the Hamiltons when they lived up here in Chehalis. So I talked to... 
Linda and talk, like got to meet the donkey and it was great. And then she was like, but I don't know how old he was when we got him. And she said, we got him from the Hamiltons. I was like, oh, that's okay. I'll call Andy Hamilton. (laughs) So I'm like, oh, how old was this donkey that you got rid of over 25 years ago? And she was like, oh my gosh, that's so weird. (laughs) It was great. (laughs) Very important. Right up there with the Go Rocks coverage from Israel. This was an awesome story. I like that It was fun. And as we discussed uh, before we started, she did get the words grizzled ass in there. Yeah. Good work. Mm -hmm. Grizzled ass. My sister texted me today just the only thing the text said was, Grizzled ass. <laughs> oh, nice. Also, she hadn't read the story. <laughs> <laughs> also, um, I put this plug at the end of it, but if you or someone you know has a donkey older than Bart or any really old pet, please email me. I would love to make some fake feature out of it because it's great. I hope people just start like texting you pictures of their dogs that they've clearly spray painted gray. <laughs> like, look at how old this dog is. I mean, that would be funny. The, I don't yeah. care. The but her, I love when people send the me but her things. email section is going to be awesome. Yeah. With these animals. Did you call it the butthurt emails section? Butthurt emails. There you go. Butthurt emails. Butthurt. I also thought you said butthurt. I kind of like butthurt emails. I do have a good email, but yeah. But we'll get there when we get there. <laughs> uh, uh, Ted the Mule, I just want to point out, was a Pete Caster, Eric Schwartz joint. We've only paired up on a few things over the years because mm-hmm. I haven't been a reporter with him. So it's very special. Wow. Uh, Ted guys, the Mule liked coffee, cough drops. That was what he liked to eat as snacks. Oh, wow. Good for Key to his longevity. How do you figure that out? I don't know. He probably had try, try this, drops in his pocket. Try, try this candy. Fed it to him. <laughs> yeah, they just fed him different medicines until he liked one of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, next item, a peer counseling program to begin for Lewis County veterans. These veterans will soon be offered peer counseling services in addition to housing, health care, and other community resources. On Tuesday, $75,000 in county veterans relief funds were authorized by the commissioners to begin the new peer-to-peer program. And any peer counseling volunteers who want to participate can apply at the museum. Sounds like a good program. Yeah, this is a nice bow on the end of this story that we've been, like the county has been trying to sort out this funding for a little while. I'm sure that once they get it up and running, we'll be able to do some kind of feature on it because I can imagine it'll be really valuable. Didn't they need $300,000 for the program they estimated? So this (laughs) is kind of like a get some get started money? Probably. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this was from a, another press release from the county, so there wasn't a whole lot of more than a rewrite there, to be honest. Okay. Obviously, I wish I could have given more of those details. I have You've not... You've been doing nothing, <laughs> and I don't understand it. I won't take it anymore. <laughs> I've, I've been really behind on the county news recently. Uh, next item. Lewis County Warehouser employs picket as strike over pay. Healthcare cost continues. There was 14 employees outside the Warehouser Research Center across the parking lot here on Pearl Street on Thursday. Uh, Striking warehouser mechanic Wayne Pace, reading from a prepared statement, said, quote, the union membership as a whole is truly disappointed in the current contract proposal offered by Warehouser Company. The offerings are not up to many standards in today's economy. The concerns were, of course, about health insurance and other benefits, as well as their pension and pay. And it's worth noting, this was in the story, Warehouser had $10 billion in net sales last year. That's a lot. They want their piece of the pie. That's a good where, do you, where do you guys stand on it? Uh, Franklin, you pro-union guy? <laughs> I don't know. It kind of, I guess it depends. It <laughs> the depends. laugh I told it, it all. I guess it kind of depends what you do. <laughs> oh, okay. So some unions are more important than others then. I wouldn't say that, but I know like a lot of my friends that are construction guys, the first thing they do is they go join a union uh-huh. and then that union places them where they work. Yeah, but then the, any job that I've had, I worked at like Polo, and then before that, I worked at like a restaurant, uh-huh. but never before like thought, hey, but I need to join a union before I go work at that restaurant. So I've never I been think, in a position for it to affect me. Like if you're a newspaper person, you don't need a union. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, last uh, I cry. <laughs> you should start a union, Franklin. Uh, <laughs> the warehouser picketers were back out there yesterday, by the way, and today they weren't. They were there in the morning, but. Um, they were gone in the afternoon, and I got a news release that they had headed north, and they were at the Seattle headquarters, I believe, Okay, doing a little more. And I also had a tip that they were very close to coming up with a contract. I can't reveal my source. Oh, was it Because the person Jim did not Weyerhaeuser? provide their name. It wasn't Jim Warehouser. I love that this quote is attributed to striking mechanic as if he's, like, really handsome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like that, too. Maybe, maybe he striking. was. Striking. I bet you Wayne Pace is handsome. (laughs) Yeah, he probably is a handsome dude. 
Anyway, that was our Yay. union discussion. Ah oh, man. Man, I hate Every when you do that. Time. <laughs> You know, why don't you guys produce a podcast? <laughs> Single <laughs> once. A podcast. I couldn't do it. Anyway, next item. Shahila celebrates 75th anniversary of 1947 historic UFO sighting with Flag Saucer Party. Owen went and covered this. So did Emily. Shot photos. So did Emily. Everybody kind of went to the Flying Saucer thing. From Owen's story, the fact that the Flying Saucers, he's got Flying Saucers in quotes, which is just pretty funny to me. Famously spotted by pilot Kenneth Arnold in 1947, remain unidentified to this day. Didn't stop around 900 people from showing up on Saturday to celebrate the 75th anniversary of Arnold's sighting at the Shalis Flying Saucer Party. Uh, it's a good story. There's a lot of stuff in there. There's also something in there about Kenneth Arnold's daughter getting made fun of over it. They called her Arnold the Pig, which... I think she was feels... talking about her mother that got called that. <laughs> yeah. Kenneth Arnold's daughter was the person telling the story's mother okay the granddaughter was Listen. telling the story about no aaron had it right oh, okay yeah the granddaughter My was bad. telling the story Idiot. about her mother which was <laughs> kenneth's daughter okay who said i'm sorry she was called. look rare anyway, rare error they called her arnold the pig which doesn't feel like it has anything to do with flying saucers <laughs> i know no, it's, it's just, so mean it is very it's very so mean. wild <laughs> Very anyway, uh, Kenneth Arnold's granddaughter thinks he'd be happy with how people feel about UFOs nowadays. And I believe Emily, thanks to the X Files. I believe Emily Fitzgerald said they had leftover T shirts that you could still buy uh, if you did right. not get your shirt, Aaron. They, I did not get my shirt. You'll probably have to ask the historical museum, but I did go down there and buy a shirt yesterday because the design is phenomenal. It's a flying saucer taking the yard bird, and underneath it is a Bigfoot walking along. It's so good. It's a good design. Very also, cool. this just in, Arnold the Piggy was a character on Green Acres. So, Oh, okay. Well, that makes sense. It, yeah. did, it did relate. I mean, it still doesn't have anything to do with flying saucers. Yeah, but it was timely for an Arnold. I, <laughs> it's like if if so they had had a Schwarzenegger, maybe they used Schwarzenegger. I, I don't just know. don't really... <laughs> I, I feel like it might not have to do with her father. Yeah. Like I'm not somebody, blaming her. I'm like not blaming her. It was popular her. culture at the time. Yeah. If somebody came up and was like, hey, it's Aaron the fatty. And I was like, I can't believe you hate the podcast. And yeah. like, you're on a podcast? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, next item. Here we go. Hearing on windmill code change for Lewis County. He's postponed. grinning ear to ear right now. He loves this. I love windmill gate. <laughs> uh, the great windmill summit of 2022 was moved from Tuesday of this week. Today to October 4th, giving both sides more time to prepare their, prepare their windmill arguments. And their windmills. Yeah. This is a hearing on the potential code change that could pave the way for windmills in Boisford on what is currently Weyerhaeuser land, correct? It's the second time you've misspelled Weyerhaeuser in these notes. Look, it's a difficult word. It's, it's not tricky. the worst spelling I've seen today of Weyerhaeuser. There was an abomination on Slack earlier. You spelled it wrong in the headline. Jared spelled it wrong yesterday. and I copied it out of his cut line oh. and you didn't catch it in the cut line but caught it in the headline. Oh, you're right. <laughs> oh, checkmate, <laughs> everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Spider-Man meme of nobody being able Everyone to was Wait, wrong but me. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, Commissioner Lindsey Pollock is just getting some shots off in this follow-up story. The original story we talked about last week, I believe, she said she was able to, quote, follow the rat path in a way her colleagues did not about this code change in windmills. Such a veterinarian comment. I, <laughs> it is. Like, she might have literally followed a rat path. I don't know. <laughs> uh, there was a line in there about <laughs> the other commissioners stated they needed time to do more time to do research. And I can't think of anything more iconic than county commissioners and doing their own research. Um, where do you guys stand on Windmill Gate at this point? I don't know enough about it to know. So. You got to do your own research? I got to do my own research on it. Mm -hmm. What I'm really stressed about at this point is that it's a complicated topic because it's about this code change that would allow research. And then if that happens because of this state law, this is what Lindsey Pollock thinks will happen next. Mm -hmm. So like the argument is about something that is not necessarily happening because of the code change, but what might happen after it's implemented. So it's really quite difficult to write about because it's 
such a complicated topic and like growth management and zoning and rezoning and whatever is already complicated. And so I'm just not sure that I really did a good job of like clearly representing the subject. But I do think what comes through in this is that there are like, there are frustrated people who don't want windmills. And that is definitely true. It's a real whodunit. It's... (laughs) It is. Although, on the other hand, like you're correct, but also the idea that you're arguing with somebody on the other side of the political spectrum about what might happen maybe down the road if a change occurs is basically like the state of politics for the last decade. I thought you did a good job because you didn't get down on it. You stayed high enough above the issue to just say what you know. Like and you that's were riding from atop a beautiful windmill, right. providing <laughs> power and knowledge <laughs> to the readers. You love to see it. One arm is the knowledge. One when is somebody going to, I hope somebody comes to this meeting with one of those piles of dead birds beneath a windmill that we've heard so much about. Are you, I, bir- are you a bird truther? I, <laughs> do you mean, I think they're not real? Uh, yes. I thought, yes. I thought folks might end up actually just speaking during the public comment of today's meeting. If, if they were like really r- roused about this subject, but nobody talked about it. So I think, yeah, we'll definitely oh. be witnessing whatever happens on the fourth. I have plan it on it, my calendar. Plan it pretty close to the vest. Got to keep those, <laughs> keep those windmill takes hot for the big one on October 4th. <laughs> yeah. There should be some doozies there. Yeah. Uh, next item. What the if chamber- they blow weather back out to sea? Anybody I've thought been about saying that? that on this podcast okay, for two I missed years. That. Missed that. Chamber of Commerce hosting debates for county races on October 13th to ensure everyone has the opportunity to go learn more about these candidates and what they stand for. The Chamber has conveniently scheduled these debates for noon on a Thursday. So if you're jobless, retired, maybe you own your own business and can afford to leave someone else in charge for a while, or you just have a two-hour lunch break, you know, if you fit into one of those normal working class people yeah. demographics, they're always pretending to care about. You'll be welcomed in with open arms. It's the usual chamber forum time. And why don't you have it in the people evening? with jobs make it because it's at lunch. 1130 to one o'clock. They yes. are, they are going to be putting it on their Facebook. So it should be available to watch for folks who can't attend. But in you person. can't ask questions. And like, shake but your I fists. show up but for work at I'm 11 not, and have lunch from noon to five. I'm not sure. Did did it say in the release that they would be soliciting questions from the crowd? I don't, I don't know. Maybe. I want to you know what if I go to a debate, I want to be able to shout and let them know how I feel about Generally their though, after the forums, you ha- like if you want to, you can walk up and talk to the candidates and get your questions That is answered. true. So. No, I I'm not trying to say that one of you is correct or incorrect about your take on this. Could I'm you? just I'm simply trying to say that it will be available to watch for people who can't attend and I think that's valuable information to add along with your argument. I'm just saying have it in the evening like what well, Aaron, we're going to have our chronicle debates here in this very room, and you, being a member of the editorial board, will I'm of course the be there. Will of course be there. What time of day are they? I don't know yet. All they times better be even. <laughs> just eleven thirty. Four a.m. Eleven thirty. A lot of races to cover. Uh, will this, that work for you, working class man? Four a.m. Yeah, I can make that. You're not running then. I know you like to run. <laughs> no, I usually don't get up till five. Whoa! Uh, these debates are <laughs> <laughs> the debates cool are guy. between sheriff candidates Tracy Murphy and Rob Snaza and District 3 Commissioner candidates Harry Bagwandan and Scott Brummer. Uh, if you are really interested in how Tracy Murphy and Rob Snaza feel about things, I encourage you to listen to a few episodes past of this podcast where we had them before the chamber did. <laughs> also, there will be a candidate Forum. I'm not sure it's a debate format, but sort of learn more about them um, on September 29th at the Packwood Community Hall at 5 p.m. And then another... What, what time of day? 5 p.m. Candidates can be somewhere in the evening? It's the Chamber Forum. Man, give the Chamber a break. Literally, they've done this every single debate every year. Well, it's I always at the Chamber Forum. <laughs> uh, and then, yeah... Well, there will be, what I'm trying to say is there's going to be opportunities for people to be able to talk to these folks and learn more about their stances. And furthermore, I'm sure that the Chronicle will be covering it in some capacity if it's interesting. (laughs) Isabel will go, determine whether or not it's interesting. Well, that is what I do with every chamber forum. (laughs) 
You never know. It's a crap shoot. Up five minutes in, just go <laughs> leave. Well, one time we went and Diane Dory dropped some like huge breaking news, and then yeah, sometimes that happens. No. Others not so breaking, yeah. which is fine. All right, next item: Winlock artist brings art to Burning Man. This is a story about Michael DeKet, a man from Winlock, who got a call from his brother, who works as a cattleman who had heard about an arts contest that was taking submissions. They wanted life-size or larger horse sculptures that would be shown together in a herd formation at Burning Man called Wild Horses of the American West. The purpose of the project was to draw attention to the plight of wild horses in Nevada, which are dying due to lack of natural resources. And Michael DeKette was one of 14 artists chosen for the event, which took place two weeks ago. He had 60 days to get his sculpture put together and then drive it down there. And then he got to go to Burning Man. And I got to say, it's horse sculpture. Looks pretty cool. It, it does look, look cool. pretty sweet. Yeah. Very shiny. Uh, I found uh, humor in he, his quote early on in the story. And this is a Karina Stanton story. Um, but he said, Burning Man was like stepping into what the human race should be. <laughs> and that quote set off a man in the comments. <laughs> it was just, oh, he was the quite upset about happy. that. <laughs> I mean, I... Can get it. Like, he's an artist. It's Burning Man. Come on. I'm sure it's, it's going to be pretentious, right? But, like, yeah, he didn't look that pretentious. He just looked like a dude from Winlock. He happened to make art. Yeah, no. Yeah, I think she um, just meant like Burning Man in general. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. If somebody's like, and oh, also, look at Burning this Man. is what the human race should be. I mean, uh, yeah, yeah, whatever. Sit no, around in the desert drinking beer. Yeah, trading. Good all time. Burning Man takes place Littering. in the desert in a nine mile area. <laughs> it's completely Burning cashless. Thing. Oh, you'd hate that, wouldn't you, Schwartz? Well, oh, yes, I would, yeah. Cash guy? Yeah, well, I went to... Yeah, don't even get me started. I tried to go to a Mariners game, and I was just oh, getting... Oh, you can't use cash there anymore, yeah. Oh, no, nowhere. You can't park. You can't buy anything. Mm-hmm. I felt like a real idiot. <laughs> Didn't have uh, a credit card. Cash. I had a credit card. <laughs> but even that has been outpaced. They wanted Apple Pay at all the parking spots. Visitors, Anyways, visitors, rant over. <laughs> visitors bring everything they need to Burning Man, and then they barter or trade for anything else they require. Um, that sounds awesome. Isn't that like illegal? What? Technically? Bartering? No, no, no. no. Sorry. Oh, not not accepting cash. cash. Oh. I guess not. Well, I don't know. I thought it was. Seattle is dying, so <laughs> it could be. I mean, I bet it's not if you like establish it like before going into the ballpark, but I don't know. Yeah, whatever. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Off topic. Um, no, it's on topic. I'm very upset about it. What would you guys take to barter at Burning Man? Your words, your stories. A good story. Yeah, I got nothing. <laughs> Have you guys ever been to a barter fair, though? No. No. Familiar with a barter fair? Oh, man. I went no. to one in Eastern Washington one and time. I, I was like in college. I feel like I can understand the concept by the name. But. Oh, yeah. It's exactly what you're <laughs> envisioning. It's not bartering of many goods that aren't, you know, narcotic in nature. But, yeah, it's a good time. All right. Cool. I've heard. <laughs> uh, next item. The Lewis County Board of Health is seeking applications for the Lewis County Public Health and Social Services Advisory Again, Board. Again, grinning. He's just like, oh. <laughs> County news oh, is God. so I, funny. He's ready. Yeah, he's the only person ready. interested in the advisory <laughs> board story so it's far. Aaron, like it, none, most of the general public See, is like, to, this is the most, rant. <laughs> most of the general public is like, that is the most boring thing I've ever heard. I don't even know why I would care about that. And Aaron's like, <laughs> it's also funny because in his notes here, he purposely excludes the one thing he had suggested previously would be like someone with a background in homelessness Which is be what added they're and they're the doing that and he's for. mocking them in the notes anyway so take it away Aaron oh the 11 member volunteer board gives recommendations to the board of health which once again is just the county commissioners on a variety of community health environmental health and social service issues which are promptly ignored (laughs) you can apply on the county's website if you feel like doing something useless with 60 minutes each month for the next three years and you don't have HBO Max I have HBO Max (laughs) <laughs> you have I mean, my HBO have your, Max. Have your login. Speaking of that, I'm pretty sure I accidentally kicked your parents off my Netflix recently. You kicked me off your Netflix oh, really? as well. <laughs> oh, sorry. I kicked him off my I Netflix was like, previously. I wonder who's I watching these weird shows. I'm sorry. You do, uh, you do have the odd taste, sir. I, yeah, I watch a lot of a lot of erotic thrillers on There's there. You a know? lot of erotic, very erotic. <laughs> uh, congressional race profiles. Actually, wanted before we talk about this, I wanted to just say we did these congressional profiles that were in today's paper and they're online, but also we didn't talk about there are um, 
county commissioner candidate profiles that went in last Thursday's paper. Um, Scott Brummer and Harry Bagwandan are running for commissioner district three, commission district three commissioner, I guess is technically the title, but um, yeah. So if you want to learn more about the candidates that will be in that debate at the chair, the chamber forum, you can also read about them on Cronline. All right. And then these. Um, these. So, yes. yeah. The, take, take it away. The candidates for the third congressional district, Joe Kent and Marie Glusenkamp Perez, uh, we did like, they both got nearly 1,700, I should say, they each got nearly 1,700 words in the paper. And a lot of photos, they're both sectioned out. So I talked to each of them about their life stories, some of their politics. I sort of try to draw in some of the stuff they have different and what they have in common. And they should be found at sort of similar bullet point areas of the story. So um, if you read through them one after the other, you should be able to kind of piece out how they might differ on subjects or just in their lifestyles, but also just like it's a get to know them and here's who might represent you. Here's who you can vote for. Um, hopefully it shows a side of each of them that voters didn't know. I'd, I'd really love to hear if people felt like they learned something new from them. Yeah, I thought they were great. I thought it was nice to, um, cause we've read, I mean, written and read from other surrounding papers, plenty of stuff on their, you know, policies where they stand on each issue. And so I think Isabel went into this to try to get a little more, um, about who they are, what has brought them to this point. So I really, really enjoyed that. Um, like everybody knows Joe Kent, it's a former Green Beret for instance, but you were able to walk through what, where he kind of saw his career going. His wife gets killed to action, meets with Trump. Um, I just thought it was a cool narrative. And then likewise with, um, Houston Camp Perez, um, I, w- I didn't know she had a kid. There's a one-year-old kid in the past year. It's yeah. a very surprising decision, which she kind of talked about to run for office um, after that. And, yeah, it was cool. I thought both of them were great. And you went all the way to their uh, mechanic shop in Portland for her interview, right? Yep. And then um, for Kent's, we went to his campaign office in Vancouver. So both of them were about the same amount of time for drives. But, uh, yeah, they both are stationed down in the Columbia River area. All right, great. Yeah, those look good. I haven't read them yet. I probably will. Didn't uh, Glusenkamp Perez also say she's the first candidate not from Clark County ever? She said she's the first candidate in the general election Gotcha. for the third congressional who is not from Clark County. She lives in Skamania County, but like just over the line into Skamania. Um, it's still a Washougal address which, as you know, is in Clark County. And you also asked uh, Joe Kent about something that had been perplexing me. If you are to, if you're listening, Google Joe Kent DUI, and a picture of Joe Kent in Oregon will pop up as the first result. At least the story will pop up with the photo. And there's a guy that looks like Joe Kent, and his name is Joe Kent, and he has the same age as Joe Kent. He's not in Oregon, though. It was like a... Oh, it was Oregon. Really? Emily said it. My Oregonian told me it was Oregon. In any case, this... It wasn't him, apparently, according to Joe Kent. Uh-huh. Co- well, so, we you know different. <laughs> I did ask him about it, and he was like, yeah, I'm pretty sure you could like get experts to verify this. And yeah. I was like, well, I'm not an expert, so I'm asking you. Yeah, I was just curious. I just wanted to know what his <laughs> I wanted to know what his answer would be because it's wait, an wait, odd wait, wait. it's an odd so, collection of. Uh, so you presented this to him, and he was like, "You know, you could get an expert to verify this. Do you have an expert?" And you were like, "No." And he's like, "Oh, then it's not me." No, no, he said it. No, that's not me. Pretty sure you could like verify that with somebody else. I think or something. it was like like a, if you're planning to <laughs> say yeah. it's me, you should check. Yeah, I don't know. It was it was kind of an awkward. I didn't, I really didn't want to bring it up, but <laughs> <laughs> Eric was like saying that I should. And also, you I know, th- but it's not just you. It's not just yeah. you. Like other people had sent it and said like, is this him? And, um, and then as soon as I said it, they were like, oh yeah, we are aware of this. And it's the other Joe Kent. And they said he has a social media presence. I will be honest. I looked for this Joe Kent's social media presence and did not find him, Hmm. but they do have very different tattoos and I don't know. Mm. looked like his DUI happened in Mississippi, Jones County, Mississippi. Fair enough. 
There's a town of Laurel, and it's a Laurel. Anyways, we've spent far too much time on this. Yeah. All right. Uh, as far we're as gonna... we know, it wasn't him. No, no, not him. <laughs> we're going to have a look. It's interesting. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. Hi, this is Jacek from Summit Funding. Here's what a recent client is saying about us. Hi, this is Chad Taylor. Have you been thinking about purchasing or refinancing your current home? The team at Summit Funding is the best in class. Looking for a conventional FHA, VA, USDA, jumbo, or even a reverse mortgage? Trust the team at Summit Funding. Corley and I did, and we couldn't be happier. Thank you to all of our past clients. If you have any questions, give us a call at 360-330-4037. All right, we're back. It's time for segments. First up, we've got Tales from the Takes page, a.k.a. the Opinion section. We have a letter to the editor titled, Death of Queen Raises Questions on Whether Monarchy Should Be Maintained. This is from Joseph Tipler, and he has written a banger of a letter. One of the lines I liked was, An entirely logical line of thought may conclude that the British monarchy should be abolished, but athwart this line lies a thousand years of precedent. He's my favorite, one of my favorite letter writers. Every time I get a letter from him, I, I close the door. It's me time because yeah, I'm going to read it. <laughs> sit down and soak it in, baby. He's been at it, he's been at it for years. And I mentioned last time he came up, I, I offered him columnist, and he told Doug Blosser, our old newsroom assistant, he would like to stick to the letters. Yeah. Anytime there's a big world event, you're going to get his take on it, though. Yeah, I like this letter. <laughs> it's very it's good. good. I thought it was well done. And also, I had to look up the word athwart. I mean, I also, I also looked it up in context, like you might understand, but I had never seen it before. Yeah, he had some he had some good takes in there. Uh, that's all I have from the opinion section. If you guys have anything you'd like to add. I don't know. We got a letter to the community from Commissioner Lee Gross this afternoon on the Goat Rocks fire. It was a mm-hmm. good, good read. Um, nothing super surprising. And uh, oh, I spent. Yeah. You should say what you were talking about, about the letters. What do you mean? Oh, yeah. A uh, website, our form for letters, you, you submit them through cronline.com. We haven't been getting them for the past three weeks, I think, oh. maybe a little more. Um, that got fixed by the great Kyle McCarricker over the weekend, and I've got a big backlog, and so uh, Thursday's paper will be chock full of letters. It might just be all letters. I thought you were <laughs> standing here athwart a line of censorship. <laughs> I wasn't, but many people thought I was. Mm. Um, yeah, finally someone... M- sent it to my email address and was like, why isn't this running? And anyways, it ran and I've got a, I spent about two hours processing letters today. So great. A lot of takes in there. One of them refers to the news dump. Oh, what do they say? I'm not telling you. Not a fan. You have to wait. (laughs) No, it's just a, I don't remember which side they were on, but it was a Murphy Staza race letter. Ah, all right. People's champion of the week. I have no suggestions. So let's see what you guys got. got. No suggestions. I don't know. I just yeah, put the notes together in a hurry, as always. I just didn't get to it. Just mailed it in this week. I though. was too busy pulling precious Facebook comments of the week. Oh, good. Ugh. Well, we do have the therapy dogs that went to help the firefighters, as if the dogs make the choice, that went and spent time with the firefighters at the Goat Rocks fire. We a, a have worthy champion. Bart, the very old donkey. <laughs> you might not make it another episode. Yeah, yeah he true. nearly didn't make it to my meeting with him. Uh, they thought he was going to die like that week, which is very sad. I hope he doesn't. But um, let's see. I don't, I yeah, don't know what else. It's going to be the dogs. Uh, Joseph Tipler for writing that great letter about uh, the queen. I, you know I'm okay the queen? with that. Should it be the queen? <laughs> we should uh, honor the queen. This is... Uh, well, oh, we could do the Tanino Caboose or just the, the Kenneth Arnold. Yeah, Kenneth Arnold. Why not? 75 years later. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, For Kenneth Arnold. For the flying Arnold. saucers. All right. Speaking of which, a perfect segue into but her emails. Because I thought you were going to do the Roof Doctor ad. Oh, sorry. I kind of thought that too. <laughs> kind of thought that too. You know what? You guys should You guys should all take this up with the Roof Doctor. Where you can get a free estimate, and I can't remember the rest so of the So much for copy. my segue. Oh, my gosh. Huh? Just stolen. Yeah. Well, you, well, you know what? We can talk about your your thing, too. As soon as we're done talking about the roof doctor, which makes <laughs> house calls, they're a family-owned roofing company since 1959, serving Olympia, Chehalis, Tacoma, Shelton, Hoquim, and Longview. Offer roofing, roof repair, roof cleaning, and even emergency roofing. You know how inconvenient it is to have your roof fall off at the wrong time. They'll come and fix it in an emergency. 
Visit theroofdoctor.com to learn more. Now we can do better emails. Okay. <laughs> um, so as I've said, the policy is that we don't say who the emails are from, but um, this one is not controversial and you will understand who sent it from the subject line. So you get to know who it was from this time. But um, the subject line is aliens visiting book and brush news report from Chehalis nine seventeen twenty two. Fortunately, we had a human customer in the store this morning who had a phone and could capture these alien visitors. They heard about the UFO slash alien slash flying saucer party today. They flew in from Neptune <laughs> and then it goes on to say, um, how can we keep in touch with you aliens? And the aliens say, don't worry, we'll read your mind and leave messages and you'll know it's from us. <laughs> And then it's just a picture of David Hartz in alien costume. <laughs> it's a really crazy email, but I love it. And I somehow missed that. I would have used it. He sent it. He just sent it to me. I didn't get it. <laughs> I think he wanted you to use it. It wasn't for your amusement. Well, but did he say for Bud her emails? <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, it was like to it was to several other people, but I think it was just like, oh look, we had fun at this, and then. Um, the other good one from this week uh, is the subject line is Forest Service Fire Camp. Um, I'm not going to read the whole thing. The pitch is you should do a story on the fire camp in Randall. Um, but then it says, keep up the good work. Those were good articles, keeping people informed about the fire. P.S. And the load of corn. Did they let you take a few ears? Thank. <laughs> <laughs> In which, yes, you did. Did you, did. Did you respond to it? I did. Oh. Mm -hmm. Just respond with a picture of you eating some said, corn? P.S. on the corn. I did take a few ears Do you home. still have the uh, tree guide he sent you? Yes. Good. Uh, Sirens Banger of the Week. This is not a local story, but it is a Washington story. The headline was, Fresh Concrete Snare Stolen Mini Cooper, Washington Cops Say... A woman driving a stolen car with a bottle of whiskey in her hand and a four-year-old child in the vehicle made a wrong turn in Lakewood on Monday, authorities said, driving into freshly poured concrete in an under-construction roundabout. Wait, I have another one that is so good. Uh, suspicious circumstances. At approximately 1.15 on September 16th, a caller in the 1500 block of North National Avenue reported that for the last four nights, someone had sprayed taco sauce on their car. The caller was advised to get a surveillance camera, camera and officers will conduct patrols in the area. Interesting. Yeah, a good one. We also had... Did they catch him, do we think? I don't know. Hmm. Who do you think it is? I don't, I don't know. <coughs> taco Bandit. Uh, we had the Pacific <laughs> County resident who found explosive devices and his way of dealing with it was to load them in the back of a pickup truck and drive them to the police <gasps> station like Bane. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, my God. oh my God. I thought that was kind of funny. Uh, oh no. That's not really in our coverage area. It was out in Pacific County, but it was close enough that Emily tracked it down for us and wrote it up. Pretty good. No one died. Uh, good. Uh, Facebook comments of the week. Uh. There was lots of comments on the photos of Mexican Independence Day being celebrated in Mossy Rock, and they all went something like this. Why aren't they celebrating in Mexico? And then somebody would reply and say, do you have a problem with St. Patrick's Day too? And then the first person would say, who said I had a problem? Actually, you're the racist. <laughs> <laughs> that went on for... That is like a good summary of how it went. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of that going on. I figured there'd be some good positive discourse. Uh, on Burning oh, man. Man's art, the comment was, what a crock. The human race is the human race. We don't do anything different up here, over there, down there. Just because living at Burning Man is living primitive doesn't mean it's sustainable nor better. Just another party like the other hundreds I have been to all no, over the world. No, no, it really says that at the end. <laughs> I guarantee he has not been to hundreds of parties all over the world. Oh, come on now. You never hundreds know. Hundreds of so Burning Man. You never know. Parties. You never know. It wouldn't be the first time that a comment of the week uh, comments on the podcast on Facebook after you've quoted them. So if that person is out there, see some receipts. <laughs> yeah. Also like, look, nobody who's been to hundreds of parties like Burning Man all over the world is commenting on cronline.com. I'm sorry. Oh, please. I'm, I just I hate like, to break it to you. I feel like you. that was an, a jab. Uh, you don't think Cronline par guys party? Cron Cronline doesn't party, according to Aaron. 
Uh, on local young man Robbie Nelson scamming someone out of $130,000 with a fake business deal. The comment was, he's a good guy, made a bad decision. It's unfortunate, but he has good people. I feel bad for him and their family. They are very nice people. I'm sure he will do whatever it takes to make it right. And the next comment was, looks like he even conned you into believing he's a good guy. I thought that was funny. Uh, <laughs> We've been having a lot more people stick up for the the alleged suspects these days. Yeah. Um, Which is good. I guess. That's why we throw alleged in there, Aaron. Yeah, true. <laughs> on the sheriff's office focusing on school zones, comment was, you know what else kills kids? Fentanyl. 215 per day in the U.S. Hashtag vote Murphy. <laughs> um, like, I, you can work against both fentanyl and speed against school zones, I think. I'm like, not going to say anything more specific than there's nothing that makes me want the general election to be over more than the sheriff's race. <sighs> That's it. Yeah. No comment each side. Uh, and then a comment on the Marie Glues and Comp Perez feature. The comment was, she may be a homeowner in rural Washington State, but her family livelihood is in Portland, Oregon. Keep <laughs> Portland politics out of Washington, which I say, someone hasn't visited JoeKentCIA.com. Also, Joe Kent misspelled Wakayakum County. On he, Twitter. Like, blatantly. Like, like, I mean, they're both Portland people, okay? Like, yeah. Uh, but Whatever. his spelling of Wakayakum was. Brutal. Do you think Lucen Camperez is going to seize on to, like, does she have the uh, ability to seize on to Portland Joe, the Bernie bro, in some way, shape, or form? I, I don't know. Like, sure. what if she sure. somehow cast herself as farther to the right than Joe Kent himself? <laughs> <laughs> I can spell Wakayakum. <laughs> anyway, what's uh, what's coming in the next edition? Well, first, there is going to be, I don't have the information in front of me, but it's on Cronline. There's going to be a debate between Perez and Lucen Camp. Sorry, Gleason Kent Perez and Kent uh, in October that the Chronicle's taking part in, mm-hmm. um, along with the Columbian, the Scamania Pioneer, the Longview Daily News. Ilwaco Observer. Uh, Chinook, Chinook, Chinook Observer. Observer. Yes, great paper. Um, so, yeah, we'll have more details on that as it gets closer. I'm not going to look it up. I was going to try. But Is the Wakayakam Eagle going to be there as well? Uh, no, wow. neither will the Reflector or the Nisqually mm-hmm. Valley News. They wanted to keep it to those five. Anything the most else? prestigious. <laughs> yes, that's in the Scamania Pioneer. <laughs> <laughs> Crown Jewels, the Southwest Washington News scene. Anything else you guys want to throw out there before we wrap this one up? Gosh, I had something. Um, I did have uh, one of the letters I mentioned earlier, letters to the editor. He starts off, and I'll bring it up next week when we get to the tales of the takes, but I just wanted to share it. Uh, his intro to his letter was like, I've been reading a lot of local news outlets late, lately, and as part of my new effort to improve local news, I've been began adding my comments on Facebook. Oh, that's great. <laughs> That'll Good help. Job. It That'll was just help. funny. It That'll wasn't help. even a, it wasn't a bad letter at all. I just thought that's pretty interesting thinking. I want to know what other local news outlets he's reading. Seattle Times is what the letter was all about. Oh, well. Um, <laughs> also, I, for the next edition, I was just going to mention we should have a something on art trails, which is this weekend. So if you're interested in checking out the local art studios, this is your chance. Yeah. All right. Some cool. nice uh, sunset shots or sunrise shots. The Isabel shot. Those will be in there. Set an alarm Ooh. for those babies. <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, in closing, we're sponsored by some funding in the roof doctor. You can leave a review and rate our podcast on Apple podcast. If you want, 